Hello, sports fan. It's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke. And today, two things. I'm going to recap the uh, draft, at least as far as my team goes, and show you what my, uh, my team now looks like. And then we are going to also talk about, well, really, first we're going to talk about the actual draft and how my predictions for the first 20 picks differed from the actual first 20 picks. Um, so, let's get into that. Um, there, uh, I, I'll put a link below to the, uh, or uh, there's going to be an end screen. There'll be an end screen at the end of this video. Connecting you to my predictions for the first 20 picks in my draft. And you might want to go back and check that out. But there were eight players of the 20, so um, got like 40% uh, wrong. There were uh, eight players of the 20 that were picked in the first 20 um, picks in our draft, which I did not see being picked in the first 20. And a couple of those, there's reasons which I will explain. Uh, so anyway, those, those players are Griffin Canning, Zach Galen, Keston Hura, Gavin Lux, Christian Walker, Jordan Yamamoto, Jesus Lazardo, and Will Smith. All of those players were picked in the first 20, that, and I did not see them going in the first 20. Um... Now a couple of them, you know, there, there's, you know, there's a few in there that are solid picks. Um, Christian Walker, Will Smith, um, you know, I just didn't see him going quite that early. But and we're talking about Will Smith, the catcher for the Dodgers, not Will Smith, the relief pitcher. So, you know, there's a few in there like that. But uh, Griffin Canning. He didn't have a lot of innings last year, and he has an injury history in the minor leagues. So I, I, you know, I wouldn't have picked him in the first round. I mean, just really, let's just cut through it. I wouldn't have picked him in the first round. First of all, because I have another video where I explain, you know, draft tips. Maybe I'll leave that one in the link or at the end screen too, but. Um, but in my draft tips video, I say, you know, I don't like drafting a guy that we don't know any past history on, let alone an injury history. But when you do know he had an injury history, that rules him completely out. I mean, I, I'm not saying I wouldn't have taken Griffin Canning somewhere later down the line, second, third, fourth round, maybe. But not the first round. I mean, that guy's, you know, his arm is liable to go out on him again. I mean, it's already happened once. You know, very young in his career. So very early in his career. So, I don't know. Um, Gavin Lux, I don't even know who that is. So, I can't really even say why he was picked that early. Someone must know something about him. Um... Jesus Lazardo is another guy. He had like 12 innings pitched last year for the A's. He's one of those guys that um, I don't know of an injury history that he had, but he's one of those guys that I say, we don't know anything about this guy. Nothing. We know nothing. I mean, yeah, he's predicted to be in the A's starting rotation, but that's about all we know. And with 12 innings pitched, you haven't even seen close to enough innings to even know if he can handle major league hitting. And then you go ahead and you take him in the first round. And I want to just do a little sidebar here because I, you know, the league, our league, and probably many leagues out there, is littered with pitchers from the past who were big name guys who were in the draft, and everybody was all excited about him. Oh, yeah, yeah, I got to get this guy, you know? And now, now it didn't work out quite that well. 
I mean, you've got guys like Joe Kelly, Alex Reyes. I remember the year Alex Reyes, his first year that his card came out in the draft. I knew I wasn't going to get him. And I was really bummed. I was like, oh my God, I'm not going to get Alex Reyes. That kind of sucks. Now I'm like, <laughs> I'm glad I didn't get Alex Reyes. I'm glad I didn't even have the chance. So, <laughs> really. And, you know, Drew Smiley, that guy, his career just went off the rails and down the, into the ditch. Um, Michael Waka, Michael Waka was, he was some, yeah, he was the best thing since sliced bread. Now, he, he was out there on the secondhand market. Um, man, who else is in that list? Um, Fulmer, the guy for that pitches for the Detroit Tigers. Like a, his first year he was good, and then the that year that rookie year card was drafted first overall in our league, first overall in our league. And then the next year, he wasn't that great. And then the year after that, Tommy John. This is what you're signing up for when you pick these guys. I don't know. I just don't know. See, this is why, you know, I know that the cheapest way to get good starting pitching is to get it in the draft. It is the cheapest way. Because it's your pick, no one else can up uproot you on, on your pick, and you just have to pick him. You don't have to trade anything to get him. But it's also the most unstable way to get starting pitching. So, because you just, you, you pick him, didn't cost you, you know, you didn't have to send Joey Gallo and Tim Anderson in a trade for him, but... You also might end up with a uh, an ambulance am, ambulance squad uh, uh, rider. So I don't know, but anyway. So yeah, I mean you know, Jesus Lozardo, knock yourself out. But if that guy, you know, and and he's on the A's, so that's like a double whammy right there. You don't know anything about him, and he's on the A's. Because if he comes out, like in spring training, or he, he starts the season and he gives up a few too many runs, the dude's going back to the minors or into the bullpen. Goodbye, Jesus Lazardo, the starter that you thought you were getting. So that's anyway, that's my little sidebar on the starting pitching. So anyway, yeah, I had eight guys wrong. So I was, uh, I was not very correct because... Um, if I was 40% wrong, I was only 60% right. So, um, yeah, that's how that went. Although, like I said, there's no universe where I'm picking Jesus Lazardo in the first round. There is no universe where I'm picking um, Griffin Canning in the first round. So I was wrong on those, but I'm right on the fact that those, the guys that took them might be looking at relievers or UPS drivers pretty soon. So anyway, let's talk about my Providence Grays. So here is a possible projected uh, lineup. Um, and actually, I'm going to have to change this up a little bit. Um, because... Uh, there was something that uh, I tried that that didn't work out. So we are going to, yeah, there we go. So I am I'm gonna go through my projected starting lineup first. Um, okay, so. The first guy is the leadoff hitter, and that's going to be Tim Anderson, my shortstop. There he is. He was on the team coming into the draft, so I didn't draft him, but there's his card. So the next batter would be 
Cody Bellinger, and he will be playing for me in center field. That's how I've got it um, written up now. There's his card, and of course, he was also, I drafted him like two years ago, so he was on the team coming into this year's draft, too. Another guy who I had coming into the draft, Joey Gallo. And Joey Gallo will be in left field for me. Now, he's going to get injured a lot, so um, because he was injured for a lot of last year. And his injury is at um, 8 on both sides of the card. So that's going to be a high injury. The next guy, another guy that was on the team coming into the draft is Bryce Harper. I just obtained him last year from a guy in a trade. Love Bryce Harper. So he's going to be my, my uh, DH, actually. I believe, yes. The next guy, and this guy I did draft. This is the first big-name player. Well, I don't know if he's big-name, but he's big on the card, especially against lefties. Tom Murphy. He's going to be my new catcher for the Grays. And he's going to be my catcher for the next five years because when you draft a guy, unless it's in the first round, it's a five-year contract. So... I got him for five years, if I so desire to keep him for all five years. And if you, in case you were wondering, if you draft a guy in the first round, any first round picks are 10 year guys. So, uh, Jason Hayward, and he came into the draft on my team. So, uh, he's going to play in right field. He is a right field one with a negative three arm. So that ought to go well. And then uh, the next guy is a guy that I got in the draft. This was a big pickup for me. Ruffned Odor is going to be my second baseman. Last year he had uh, 30 homers and 93 RBIs. And in most of the Sims that I've seen, he does quite well. Also picked this guy up in the draft. Evan Longoria is going to be my new third baseman. Um, he's probably now on the back nine. I would say definitely he is. But my third baseman coming into the draft was Neil Walker. So that's an upgrade. I'll call it an upgrade. And then my first baseman will be Brandon Dixon, who I also just drafted and so, um, yeah, he's going to play at first base for me. Uh, baseball Prospectus had a great line they started out with when they were doing the write-up for Brandon Dixon. They said um, something to the effect of um, to, to call Brandon Dixon a bright spot in an otherwise dark season isn't totally accurate. They said he's more like a bike reflector in a black hole. Pretty funny. So anyway, that's my lineup. And it's some serious dynamite in that lineup. Yeah. All right, you primitive screwheads, listen up. See this? This is my boomstick. <laughs> All right, now for the pitching staff. Now, the problem, here's where the problems begin. The pitching staff. Uh, the first guy that's going to head out for me, and I did draft, and in fact, most of the pitching staff is draft. Most of the, the pitching staff to start the year was drafted guys. And the first guy is going to be Merrill Kelly of Arizona. Now, Merrill Kelly, there's nothing really... Um, Nothing really exciting about him. He's a uh, he's a pitch to contact pitcher, um, and he's not going to miss a lot of bats, but he is decent. And the reason that I picked him again over people like Griffin Canning, or well, I couldn't have gotten him because Griffin Canning was picked in the first round. But the reason I picked him over somebody like Griffin Canning or Jesus Lazardo is because he's been pitching in Korea and uh, in the Korean League. 
And so he's been around, and he doesn't have an injury history that I know of, and he pitched 180-something innings for Arizona last year and had no problems. So I know a little bit more about Merrill Kelly than I know about somebody like Griffin Canning or um, Jesus Lazardo. I know nothing about them. But we know we, from what we've seen of Merrill Kelly and what we know of him, we could probably surmise that he's going to stay healthy, he's going to be in Arizona starting rotation, and he's not going to the bullpen. So there's that. And that is that kind of um, that kind of reliability for me was in familiarity with me was enough for me to decide to take. Now the next guy and the second guy is also a drafted player, and that's Homer Bailey. Homer Bailey was available in our draft, and uh, he had an injury history, but it was years ago. He it's not like he. Um, it's not like he was injured, you know, Tommy John recently. It was like four or five years ago. So, um, and he's been fine since then. He just hasn't pitched well. But last year, he started to show signs that he's starting to pitch more like he did when he was younger. And, and he's better than he was in the past few years. Uh, the next guy, Jason Vargas. Jason Vargas again, not really overpowering, not a sexy pick. He's going to, you know, he's just going to go out there with the workmanlike attitude, but he can pitch an entire season. And that is another thing the top three guys brought. Because if you remember what I was saying, in our league, if you have a starting pitcher with under 100 innings, that's all they can pitch is whatever is on the card. If they have between 100 and 139 innings, they can pitch 170 innings in our league. And if they have anything um, over uh, 139 innings, you can just put them in your starting rotation every fifth day, roll them out there, and whatever number of innings they come up with, they come up with, they can pitch. And so that applies to Merrill Kelly, that applies to Vargas, that applies to Homer Bailey. So that's why I did that. And then the next guy is Chase Anderson. I had Chase Anderson coming into the season, though. He was on my team. But before, the difference is before, he was one of the top starters on my team before the draft. And not knowing anything about who I was going to get. But now he's the fourth starter. And he had 139 innings, so he can only pitch 170. And then my fifth starter is David Price. Again, he had, in actuality, he had 107 innings, so he can pitch 170, and then he has to stop at 170 in our league. So that's the starting rotation. And now I'm just going to quickly go through some of the bullpen arms. Those aren't as big a deal as the starting rotation. They're not going to have as big an effect on the win-loss record. But uh, but if you have anything notable you want to say about anybody on any you know that I've got on my team, any kind of inside information, you live in a different area and you've heard something about a guy, certainly share it with me. I would love that. But um, one of the guys I drafted was for the bullpen is Lucas Sims, and um, he was actually a starter reliever last year for Cincinnati. So I don't know if there's any chance that he'll be a starter this year for Cincinnati. But with the card he had, I figured, hey, you know what? I can just, I'll draft him and I'll use him in my bullpen. And now off my White Sox, we have Jace Fry, who has a pretty good chance of being in the White Sox rotation, I would say, this year. So I'm looking forward to that possibility. And then we've got Austin L. Adams, or Austin Adams. I don't know why the L, but anyway, so Austin Adams, he's in my bullpen. Got a pretty good card. Um, and again, some of these guys have good cards, but, you know, it's a 20-team league. They're still going to get torched to some degree, more than you would think, even with just walks on their card. 
So Joaquin Soria is the next guy. I had him. I didn't draft him. He was already on my team and in my bullpen, projected to be in my bullpen, but there's his card. And then uh, Derek Law, that's another guy I drafted. And so he will be in my bullpen this year. Um, another guy is Tim Miza, but Tim Miza I had before I had coming into the draft. He was already on my team and now he's disappeared and fallen off the face of the earth apparently. And that's another thing. It's kind of shocking is, uh, you know, I've had like the last two, three years in a row, I've had at least one reliever who just completely disappeared. Last year I had a guy on the pirates. Uh, I forget his name, but he was a good relief pitcher. He had good stats. Didn't pitch again. He's gone. I don't know what happened to him. And then last year, I, I drafted Tim Miza. And I've read all the magazines. He's not on Toronto's 40-man roster. He's not projected to be in Toronto's bullpen. Don't know what happened to him. Uh, the next guy is Eliza Hernandez. I actually got him in a trade. I had him before the draft, so I obtained him in a trade prior to the draft. And then another guy that I had going into the draft was, um, Kenley Jansen. So that's pretty much the bullpen. I have other pitchers that can come in. I've got Kevin Gosman on my team who was on the team before the draft. I've got, uh, I drafted David Hess. In fact, we'll put David Hess's card up there. He has the distinction of having allowed the most home runs of any pitcher with 80 innings or, um, or less. I, 80 innings or less? Yeah, I guess, yeah. 80 innings or less. Or around 80 innings, whatever. He pitched 80 innings last year and he allowed 28 home runs. But the reason I drafted David Hess is because um, there was a report that um, Brandon Hyde, the manager of the Orioles, gave that he said David Hess looked good. He was working on some pitches, and he improved some of his pitches, a couple of his pitches, and Hyde said he looked really good. So, you know, I, I don't know what that means, but I'll take it coming from the manager of the Orioles. If he says Hess looks good, I'm thinking Hess at worst is going to be in their bullpen, and at best, maybe in the rotation. And I also got um, Asher Wojciechowski off of the Orioles. Um, one of the guys in the league said, so what do you draft an Orioles so that you get to watch them on Masson? Well, that is part of it. Believe it. That's part of it. But Wojciechowski and Hess may actually find themselves both in the Orioles starting rotation. And maybe they can improve on what they did last year. In fact, Wojciechowski wasn't terrible. He wasn't like Hess. He wasn't terrible. So if he can even improve a little bit, who knows? So what do you guys think? That's my, basically that's my um, starting rotation, my bullpen and my lineup. Uh, the team is going to hit. It's going to hit. It's going to score runs. It's going to hit home runs. It's going to, you know, we're going to be losing a lot of baseballs over the wall. Offensively, the team has arrived. It's ready to go. It's going to hit the ground running. But the pitching in a 20-team league, when other teams have great pitching like um, Kershaw and Giolito and Scherzer and Greinke and all, you know, guys like that. There's like, there's one or two guys like that on, it seems, every team, except mine. So that's where the problem's going to be. That's where we're going to fall a little short. So I'm going to have to figure out how to get some pitching over the next couple of years. But at least the offense is in place and ready to go when we get the pitching. But I'd be very interested to hear what you guys think about it. But for right now, it's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off.